So today I'm gonna show you guys how to deep clean your engine bay. And this is a WRX that I did the interior and exterior on a couple weeks back. And if you guys remember the car, it was completely trashed on the car inside and outside. Um, but the engine bay is no exception, which is surprising for a modded vehicle. You would think that if you're modifying it and touching the engine bay and fixing it all the time, you're gonna have some clean spots, but this one is the exception by far. And before we even get into it, the first thing we need to do is disconnect this battery. And one of the biggest things that you can see here is how close this nut is to this intercooler tubing, which is metal as well. And when you put a positive to a intercooler tube, it means that you get a spark arc situation. And I definitely shocked myself at least once. Um, but then also remove the intake filter, uh, being obviously being exposed because it's a modded car. Just remove it and then I use a rubber glove to cover up that jimmy hole and um, keep any water from getting inside there and kind of going through the turbo to the intake manifold. But once that's done, you're ready to start pressure washing. I used to be a little bit more conservative when it came to doing engine bay details, um, but over time I realized that pretty much any like professional detailer, if you go to a car lot, this is how they do it. And there's really not a whole lot that you can damage. You obviously want to be careful, but this car actually had a bunch of open connectors. You have the alternator, you have different things that could possibly have issues electrically, but if the battery is removed and disconnected, there's really nothing that's going to happen. Obviously you want to let it dry and that's why we use compressed air later on, you'll see. But when the power is disconnected, there's really not much you can damage as long as you don't get any water inside the engine. Now I made sure that I did not speed up a ton of the segments so that way you guys that like the pressure washing, watching things kind of get blown off and cleaned, I kept everything at a normal speed or slightly sped up just for you guys. Now for all of you that watch this channel that are of similar age to me, that grew up in the 90s and thousands driving vehicles and Hondas and stuff like that, or any car for particular, um, honestly these Samco blue hoses are such a throwback for me. I mean everything about this is my growing up, my, my education if you will. I had friends with bug eyes, I had Honda Civics and Integras and 240s, um, yeah. I've talked about it in previous videos, but I'm still in the position of I want to pick up. I would love to pick up a 240. I love the SR20s, probably my favorite engine by far. Um, I do like B18Zs from Honda, but um, I'm a sucker for an SR20. I think that was one of the most robust engines. You know, nothing insane power wise. You know, it's a little bit harder to get power out of them, especially safely, but the sound and just how they drove was probably my favorite part.
Now, having the opportunity to drive this car was one of my favorite things because of the fact that it is a large turbo top mount on a Subaru, and I've never driven one before. I will say that I wish the clutch in this thing was in better shape because it was slipping quite a bit, but with a little bit of throttle play, you can kind of get it to catch to a certain extent and then rip it, you know, past from like 3,000 to 6,000 RPM. So it was, it definitely pulled like a, like a train. It was really cool. Um, and the surprising part is this is a car from a buddy's dealership that I know and they're selling this one in particular. I don't know if they've sold it yet, but when I picked it up, they were only selling it for like seven grand. Granted, there are some issues. Um, there's some things that don't work. The AC doesn't work. And obviously the uh, clutch needs to be done. And that could be the uh, beginning of that rabbit hole. And that's always one of the problems that you struggle with when you get a modded car from somebody else, especially if not everything's buttoned up correctly and working perfectly. Um, you run into those issues of then having to hunt down and figure out what they did, how they did it, and where they kind of skimped on certain spots. But for seven grand, it kind of sounds like a steal to me. Now with all the pressure washing done and everything kind of initially rinsed off, it already looks a lot better, um, but I'm spraying on a degreaser, especially behind the intake manifold above that transmission where that oil and sludge was kind of built up, but then pretty much the rest of the engine bay as well and kind of letting that soak and seep in, letting that degreaser do its job before we use our detailing brushes to kind of agitate and remove any remaining dirt that I might have missed from the initial spray phase and then spray it off again. Now when it comes to doing your engine bay, I don't recommend you doing this weekly or doing it monthly even for that matter. For the most part, as long as you have the cowling underneath and you have a radiator obviously blocking most of that dust from getting in too badly, um, you really shouldn't have to do this frequently. It's one of those things that you kind of do yearly if that, um, maybe every couple years just to maintain that cleanliness in there, especially if you work on your own car, it's nice. Or if you take it to a mechanic, they'll definitely appreciate it. Um, so when you're doing it, just Obviously disconnect the battery is the number one thing that I can recommend and don't spray water into your intake manifold um, because then you have a hydrolock situation and nobody wants to replace a motor.
Now, if you guys have not seen the WRX video of the inside and outside of this thing, this was a moldy sitting for several years vehicle. Um, I'll have an iCard up here and at the end of this video, there'll be an end screen that you guys can click on and go watch that because it's, um, if you thought this was good, you're gonna love that video. And I know a lot of you that are subscribed have not seen it. So if you're watching this, make sure you go check that one out after this. Now one thing I want to ask as I'm pressure washing this area, this is a Cusco sway bar or a strut tower bar. If you guys know who Cusco is or the brand, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, this engine is full of throwbacks for me. I'm sure all of you are wondering why I didn't replace the filter. Obviously this is not my vehicle, but I went ahead and sprayed out the air filter at least to remove any of the dust and dirt and grass and stuff that kind of got collected in this metal filter membrane. Um, you can see the original colors, that blue on the backside there, but the rest of it is dirty brown from just the air filter doing its job. So um, definitely a replacement element, um, but if you're actually doing your engine bay clean, it's not a bad time to check your factory filter or your aftermarket at that time and replace it or at least inspect it to see if you need to do it in the near future. Now probably the most important part is once you've got it all rinsed off and cleaned, um, I'm just using my compressed air nozzle uh, to blow out any water residue that's kind of built up, um, any water that's you know puddled in certain spots, kind of blow things out just to remove any excess liquid, not only because of just having water on the engine bay, maybe in connectors, but also because we're going to be applying a dressing to kind of keep that engine bay looking clean um, and kind of a protectant to um, keep any of that dust from sticking in the future.
Now when it comes to dressing the engine bay, if you want to spray on a tire dressing or some sort of um, plastic dressing, if you will, to kind of get the shine out of the plastic and other components, um, just using an interior matte protectant works well. And I just recommend misting it across the entire engine bay and then following with a microfiber towel to wipe any of the puddled spots from the spray nozzle and um, making sure it doesn't sit there. But a lot of the times if you do spray it, it'll probably absorb anyways, unless it's a metal component, obviously. Now with the engine bay essentially dry and dressed, it's time to start connecting back up our air filter and our battery so that way we are good to go. And just to prove to you guys that this is not a damaging process when it comes to cleaning your engine bay, and obviously I take no responsibility on your own vehicle, but for me, this is the way I do it. And when you connect the power back onto this, I had no check engine lights, no issues, and I started it up. And I would have loved to have my audio working on my camera, um, but I did not have my microphone connected. So you'll see the engine turn over and the pulley start turning along with the engine rock um, from a boxer motor and the engine bay showing you guys that it is running, working perfectly and no issues whatsoever. Now, because this transformation was amazing, this is probably one of my favorite engine bay details I've done. It turned out insane. I need you guys to click right here on screen. You'll see this is the WRX video I talked about of the inside and the outside of this specific car. Definitely worth the watch. Click on it now, keep watching. You guys will learn a ton about taking care of your own vehicle along with how I take care of these crazy nasty details that you see on this channel. And I'll see you guys over there in a second. <laughs> 